Welcome back everyone. Today we're gonna to be making a clutch purse. And this bag measures in at about 10 inches wide and five and a half inches tall after the fold. We'll be adding a lot of features on this bag, including inside zipper pockets, divider pockets, and card pockets, making it great to use as a purse or wallet. This bag is also super easy to make, so if you are new to sewing, you should have no problem found the easy step-by-step -step tutorial. With all this being said, grab that printable pattern and let's get started. Getting started with supplies, you'll need a quarter yard for your main fabric. And we're gonna be working with vinyls, leathers, pretty much anything that's heavyweight and non-stretch. And I'm actually gonna be working with the full leather. I found this fabric looked really nice and it had the perfect thickness. But like always, get creative with it, test different fabrics and see what works for you. You'll need a half yard for your secondary fabric and this is gonna be the lining fabric. So I highly recommend picking out a lightweight cotton or poly. If you add too many thick layers together, this bag can get super bulky and it won't fold and close right. So just be cautious when it comes to picking out your lining. You'll need a quarter yard of support fabric. And this technically doesn't have to be fabric. It can be any material. I'm gonna be using a foam core material. I just found this at Joann's. You can find this pretty much at any store. And it's the thinner one, so you can sew through it easily. But we're gonna be rolling the edges over onto this foam so you don't want it to be too thick. We'll get more into this later on once we start making the bag. You'll need one magnetic snap, and this is gonna be for the main closure. Depending on the thickness of your main material, you'll wanna pick out a magnet that's fairly strong. You'll need two zippers, one eight inch and one 14 inch. We want these zippers to be fairly precise, so try to get them at least this size or bigger. I'm gonna be cutting mine off of a zipper roll. This is a great way to go. You can cut your zippers to the exact size with minimal waste. You'll need two half inch to three quarter inch D-rings. We're using these for the loops on the side to attach the strap. So if you're not making the strap with this bag, you don't need to worry about the D-rings. Going along with the D-rings and the strap, you'll need two yards of a half inch to three quarter inch webbing, two lobster clasps, and one strap slider. Again, if you're not making the strap, you don't need to worry about these materials. And I'm gonna be showing you a different way to make the strap too. We're gonna be making one strap out of webbing and this is just the standard adjustable strap. So you may wanna jump ahead to see what strap you wanna make. Or you can make both straps and see which one you like better. And lastly, you'll need your pattern. This pattern is available at properfitclothing.com. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is print it off, tape it together, and you're ready to go. After printing out your pattern, the best thing to do is to cut off the top and one of the side edges. This is gonna allow you to overlap the pages for a perfectly aligned pattern. Once you have all your supplies gathered and your pattern printed out, it's time to move into cutting. And after taping your pattern together, it should look like this. You should have two rows, A and B, with four pages per row. From here, we can cut on the outside of the black line. Once you cut out all your pattern pieces, you should end up with two D-ring loops cut out of your main fabric, four lining zipper side panels cut out of your secondary fabric, four card pocket panels cut out of your secondary fabric. You can cut less than four. It really depends on how many card pocket panels you want to make. One main front bottom lining panel cut out of your secondary fabric, three lining pocket back panels, and this panel is gonna double as the back panel and also the open pocket panel. We'll get more into this once we start constructing the bag, but you only need three of these panels cut out of your secondary fabric. One lining pocket front bottom panel cut out of your secondary fabric, one lining pocket front top panel cut out of your secondary fabric, two main support panels cut out of your structure fabric. And again, I'm using a nice stiff foam material, but you can skip ahead to see how we're gonna use this fabric so you can determine what fabric you wanna use. Two main back panels, one cut out of your secondary fabric and one cut out of your main fabric. One main front top panel cut out of your main fabric. And when it comes to cutting this panel, make sure the wrong side is facing up so you get the opposite reflection after cutting the panel or you can place the text on the pattern directly to the right side of the fabric. Either method will give you the correct result, just make sure you cut one out of your main fabric. And lastly, two main front bottom outer panels, one cut out of your secondary fabric and one cut out of your main fabric. With all the panels cut, we're gonna move on to construction. Start by grabbing the lining pocket back panel. We'll only need two of the panels, so place one off to the side, locate the top edge, Determine the right and wrong sides of your fabric, and from here we're going to place the right sides together, lining up the top edge, and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to flip the wrong sides of the panels together, move the fabric around so you have the top edge lined up, and press it down. 
After pressing or pinning the top edge, double check to make sure it's perfectly lined up and from here we're going to add a top stitch. I typically do mine about a quarter inch away from the top edge and then I'll do another one a quarter inch away from that stitch. And you don't have to add two top stitches, I just find this fabric to be a little bit thin so I wanted to stiffen up that top edge just a little bit. Next grab the main back panel and we're only going to be using the secondary fabric so you can place the main fabric off to the side. This is going to end up being the divider pocket on the inside of the bag. So place the right side of the pocket to the wrong side of the main back panel. Using the pattern we're going to find the center pocket stitch guide. Feel free to chalk it out or place a few pins directly in the path. And from here we're going to stitch directly on our marked out path. And as you can see this splits up the panel into two narrow pockets. This feature is optional so if you don't feel like splitting up that inside pocket you don't have to. But for the meantime this panel is complete so you can place it off to the side and grab your lining zipper side panels. We're going to be sewing these zipper panels to the lining pocket panel but this is after we sew them onto the zipper. What I like to do is lay them out on each side of the lining pocket panel, grab my zipper and place my zipper in the center of that lining pocket panel. The zipper side panels on top of the zipper so that way they're at the edge of the lining pocket panel and mark the zipper. Flip both sides of the zipper panel over the marked area so the right sides are together. Offset both sides a quarter inch and this is going to ensure that you have the perfect width to match the lining pocket panel. From here we're going to stitch both sides at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the side panels out so the wrong sides are together. Quickly grab the lining pocket panel, line up the zipper panel with the pocket panel to make sure the width is exactly the same. And if everything's looking good, we're going to add a top stitch to both sides of the zipper. Take your time sewing over the zipper so you don't break the needle. With the top stitch complete, we're going to grab the lining pocket front bottom panel. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the zipper edge and from here we're going to place the right side of the zipper to the right side of the lining panel. Stitch the zipper edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the zipper so the right side is facing up. Grab the lining pocket front top panel. Locate the zipper edge at the bottom. And before we go and sew it to the opposite side of the zipper, we're going to first flip the panel so the right side is facing up. And the main reason we're doing this is so that this lining panel, after it's complete, will actually line up with the opposite side lining panel. You need the curve at the top of the panel to be opposite of each other so that when you place the right side together, they line up. So it's very important to flip that panel to the right side before you stitch it to the opposite side of the zipper. With everything facing the correct way, we're going to place the right sides together, lining it up on the zipper edge. Grab your final lining pocket back panel. Just like in the previous step, we're going to locate the top edge and place that top edge on the wrong side of the zipper. So that way the wrong side of the zipper is touching the right side of the lining fabric. Once you have all these layers lined up, we're going to stitch that edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the top lining panel up, leaving the back lining panel down because that's actually going to be the back side of our pocket. If all the layers are stitched together and looking good, we're going to add a top stitch to both sides of the zipper. But when it comes to the bottom side, you're going to want to move the back lining panel out of the way before you start top stitching. Because if you leave it folded down, you're actually going to stitch the layers together. And once you have a top stitch on both sides of the zipper, do a quick once over, make sure all the layers are lined up and looking good. And that's going to complete the opposite side of the lining panel. So for the next step, we're going to grab both complete lining panels. I'm going to place the pattern over top so you can get a better idea of what we're trying to do, but essentially we're going to be hemming that top edge a quarter of an inch. But before we can do that, we're going to use the corner cut guides on the pattern and snip it a quarter inch in on a diagonal and also straight down. Repeat this process for the other three corners. You want to try to get these as uniform as possible, meaning that each one is done the exact same because any minor differences may offset the zipper when you attach it. I like to use the pattern as a guideline and also I'm going to be using hem adhesive tape. This is a double sided sticky tape that when you press it, it keeps the hem secured down. I'm cutting myself a piece of tape that's long enough to do the top edge, but before I get started, I'm going to make sure that the wrong side of the panel is facing up. And by doing it this way, it just makes it a little bit easier when you fold it towards you and you can press it rather than folding it towards the back. And I can't think of any other major tips than just go slow and do a little bit at a time. Doing it this way, you'll get the entire edge nice and uniform. With one side of our lining complete, we can place it off to the side, grab our opposite lining panel and do the exact same thing. And after finishing it up, you want to double check it with the opposite side to make sure it's exactly the same. If both of the top edges line up perfectly, you can place the right sides together. 
And starting at the pop outs on the side, we're gonna stitch the outside edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. When it comes to the corners, you can either round them or square them off. Double check both sides to make sure all the layers are lined up and stitched together. And as you can see, this is the complete lining panel, so you can kind of get a feel for what the inside is going to look like. So if you want to make any changes or add any additional features, this is the time to do it. And a quick tip, if you search the outside edge, it will keep it from fraying and actually make the inside lining more durable. But from here, we can flip the right sides out, poke out the bottom corners as good as you can, Double check the side and the bottom edges. If everything's looking good, we're going to grab our 14 inch zipper. And that zipper is going to seal off the top opening. 14 inches is actually bigger than what we need. But we want it a tad bit bigger. We can snip the ends after we're done stitching it on. It's best to have a little bit to play with when you're doing an exact zipper like this. Grab the zipper and place the wrong side of the zipper to the wrong side of the lining, lining up the side edge with the center of the zipper. And there's no really quick way to do this. I don't recommend using pins. You can use them for checkpoints, but you really have to sew and keep moving down the zipper as you're going and along that edge all the way to the opposite side of the zipper. And then you flip it around and do the same thing back. It's a very slow and tedious process. That's why we want to make sure the top edges are hemmed exactly the same. So starting at the end, line up the zipper in the center of the side seam. If your sewing machine has post bed capabilities, I recommend popping that out because it makes it way easier when you're sewing around that lining. After tack stitching the center of the zipper to the side seam, you just want to slowly work around that edge, making it as even as possible. I also highly recommend matching your thread color to your fabric color. This is going to help hide any imperfections along that top stitched edge. And with the zipper stitched on, the hard part is complete. Go ahead, test it out, make sure it looks good and works correctly. And at this point, the lining is complete. Feel free to add any extra details or branding, but for now, you can place it off to the side and grab your card pocket panels. These card panels are optional. We're going to be placing them on the main front bottom lining. If you have no use for these card panels, you don't need to add them. You can just skip ahead. Since we're adding them, we're going to start with just one of the panels. So place the other three off to the side. And again, you don't have to add all four. You can add one, two, or three. Referencing the pattern, we're going to hem the top and bottom edges. Fold the edge a quarter inch and then fold it one more quarter inch, hiding that raw edge and press it down. Repeat this process for the opposite edge of the one you just hemmed. I do recommend pressing if your fabric allows for it. It really helps make it nice and even. Depending on how many card pocket panels you're adding, you're going to want to repeat this for the opposite panels. For me, I had to do it three more times because we're adding four panels. And from here, we're going to stitch each side directly on top of the hem. A quick way to do this is to sew one side for each of the panel and keep it going before you sew the opposite, then flip it around and sew all the opposites in one line. Grab the pattern one more time and we're going to do the same thing for the outside edges. But instead of rolling the edge over twice, we're going to roll it over once and press it down. Repeat this step for all of the card panels. Before we move on, I like to stack them to make sure they're all the exact same width. If any of them are a tad different, I recommend repressing them so that way they're all uniform. Grab the main front bottom lining panel, fold the pattern directly on top of the card placement guide, keeping all the other edges lined up and mark with chalk the top and bottom and each of the pocket placements on that card placement guide. Do the same thing on the opposite side of the lining panel. This will give you a nice guideline so you can place your pockets and line them up with the outside chalked edges. Depending on how much you folded the edges over, they might not match up perfectly, but you just want them to line up in the center of that chalked area. Stack them all to make sure they line up, but we're actually going to be only starting with one, so just keep the top one placed, pin it down, and stitch the bottom edge. After finishing up the stitch, we're going to keep doing the same process, so grab one more pocket, stitch it down, grab another pocket, stitch it down, and do the same thing for the last pocket. We're just stitching one bottom edge at a time, and once you get all the pockets stitched on, we're going to do the same thing for the outside edge, and I like to stitch from the bottom up so that way the pockets don't flip up as I'm sewing. I also like doing a nice tack stitch at the top of that pocket because that's going to be the weakest point. Before you move on, I always like to throw a few cards in to make sure it is the right width. Sometimes if you fold the edges in too far, it can turn out the wrong size. But if everything's looking good, move this panel to the side and grab our main front top panel. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the top edge on the main front bottom panel and locate the bottom edge on the main front top panel. We're going to sew both of these edges together, but before we do that, I recommend checking really quick. So grab your main back panel, place the right side together to check and see if that top curved edge lines up correctly. 
If it does, you can move the main back panel off to the side and place the right side together, lining up that top edge and stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance. Flip the top panel so the right sides are facing up, point the seam allowance towards the bottom of the lining panel and add a top stitch. This top stitch flattens out the seam and overall is going to give us a nice look on the inside of the pocket when the bag is complete. Place this panel off to the side and grab your main front bottom outer panel. Using the pattern, we're going to find the top edge and place the right sides together. With all the edges lined up, we're going to stitch the top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Just like when we did the divider panel, we're going to flip the wrong side together, line up that top edge and add a top stitch. After finishing up the top stitch, double check both sides to make sure the lining and the outer layer are lined up around the outside edge. Place this panel to the side, grab the assembly with the card pockets. And what we're going to do is lay this panel directly over top, lining up the bottom edges. This is going to become the cover for our card pocket. With the edges lined up, we're not going to stitch all the way around the outside edge, we're just going to place a few tack stitches on both sides and the bottom. Just be sure to stitch as close as you can to the outside edge. And by doing this, it's going to help keep that pocket lined up as we stitch all the layers together. Moving on, grab the D-ring loop panels, lay them out with right sides facing up. Just like with the card pocket panels, we're going to hem the top and bottom edges a quarter inch. By hemming them a quarter inch, the outside edges should meet directly in the center on the back of the panel. Since this is a faux leather, we can't press it because it's kind of rubbery, so we're going to stitch each side as we go. I like to do this the same way I did the pocket panels. I sew one side for both of the panels, I flip it around and do the opposite side. Double check to see if both of the D-ring loops are exactly the same. If they're looking good, we're going to grab our half inch D-rings. For this bag, I'm using a half inch D-ring because this is the size of the loop I created, but feel free to customize the loop and use a different size D-ring. From here, we're going to feed the loop panel through both of the D-rings. Grab the main back panel and using the pattern, we're going to mark out the D-ring placement guides on both sides of the panel. With the guides marked, we're going to place the D-rings directly on top, and I like to hang the edge of the D-ring off about a quarter of an inch. Feel free to play around with that placement depending on how much you want to see the D-rings in the finished bag. When you're happy with the placement, tack stitch both D-ring panels down. Quickly double check to make sure the D-rings are lined up across from one another after stitching. If everything's looking good, move this panel to the side, grab the opposite outer assembly. Using the pattern, we're going to locate the corner cut guides and we're going to do the same thing we did for the lining. Make two snips a quarter inch into the seam allowance on all four of the corners. Flip the assembly so the wrong sides are facing up and grab the main support panels. The foam material I'm using for the support panel has an adhesive back. I really like that it has this because I don't have to use glue, so I don't have to worry about it sliding around once I place it onto the main panel. And the goal is to line it up directly with the seam allowance and not the outside edge. So I find it best to mark out that seam allowance on the top edge before we place our support panel. Do the same thing for the opposite outer assembly. And before you permanently place the support panel, double check the seam allowance on both of the assemblies. If they're identical, you can go ahead and place your structure panel. And the whole reason for this panel, it makes it easier to roll that edge over a quarter inch and stick it down. We're essentially doing the same thing we did for the lining, but with this leather fabric, it's a little bit more difficult to work with, so we used a structured fabric to roll it over and we're going to glue it down. I'm using a fast setting glue because I don't want to sit and hold this for a long time. I want it to be nice and sticky right when I start applying it. And I also don't want it to soak through the material, so be cautious on what fabric glue you use. I'm squeezing the glue out right up against that structure fabric on the inside of that seam allowance. Since this is fast setting glue, you have to quickly roll that edge over and keep moving. Roll the entire top edge out, both of the corners and the sides. It might not look that great on the wrong side, but when you flip it over to the right side, if the edge looks nice and rolled over, you're good to go. So you can place this panel off to the side and grab the opposite outer assembly. Do the exact same thing. Spread the glue out along the seam allowance, roll the edge over, and wait for the glue to set. I also find when the glue is not fully set and it's still tacky, you can move that seam allowance around to match up perfectly with the opposite outer panel. Because since this is real stiff fabric, you don't have a lot of wiggle room to play with when you're stitching, so these top edges have to be perfectly identical. Or identical as possible, and all the side edges have to be the same length too. If everything's looking good, we can place the right side together and stitch both of the sides and bottom at a quarter inch seam allowance. It's important to stitch the exact depth as you did the lining, so that way the zipper lines up when you stitch the zipper to this outer layer. After finishing up the stitch, double check all the layers and flip the right sides out. Poke out the corners as good as you can. If you need a snip around the corners to relieve a little bit of that tension, feel free to do so. 
This bag is designed to fold at the top edge of that pocket and have the D-rings just right along that edge as well. If yours looks like that and folds like that, then you're good to move on to the next step. I just want to make sure yours looks similar before we move on. Next, we're going to add the magnetic snap. So grab the main front top panel, cut out the snap button placement guide. Be aware of the seam allowance and lay the pattern out on the side of the bag with the pocket. Mark the magnetic snap guide with chalk. And the easy way to get the opposite side is fold your bag in half, tap it out, find where the chalk laid and mark that spot too. This will give you the best placement for the opposite side because it's where your bag naturally folds. Fold it over and test it a few times. If it's lined up and looking good, we're going to move on to adding our magnetic snaps. Typically, these have a bendable prong back, but these ones are a little bit different. They have a snap back that you press down. Punch a hole in the center of your chalked area and slide your magnetic snap through. I like to place the thinner one towards the top. Move to the bottom of the bag and do the same thing for the opposite side of the magnetic snap. Punch a hole and slide it through. Typically, you can install these snaps with just your hands, but these ones it requires a press or pliers. I'd recommend using whatever ones that work best for you. The first thing you want to do is flip that snap down to make sure it lines up correctly because at this point you still can move it around a little bit if it doesn't fully line up. And another quick thing to look at is to see if that top edge is parallel with the bottom edge. If everything is looking good, we can open this outer panel up, move it to the side, grab the complete lining assembly. The wrong side of the lining should be facing out and we're going to place the wrong side of the lining to the wrong side of the outer layer assembly. Line up the curved point at the top of the outer layer and the top of the lining. Move the zipper so it lines up directly in the center of the side seam. And just like we did the lining, we're going to sew as we go and work it all the way around. But the best thing to do is work it with your fingers first to make sure it lines up correctly before you start sewing. Once you're confident both of these layers are lined up perfectly, we're going to start stitching at the side seam and work all the way around the outside edge, just like we did the lining. As you can see, we're using an edge presser foot. This really helps guide us along that edge so we get a nice even top stitch and overall makes for a nicer looking bag. This stitch is on the harder side, but if you try it a couple times, you will get used to it and it will become easier. So don't give up after one try. Do it a few times because with practice, sewing gets way easier and using these techniques really helps out in all of your bag making. And I also recommend using a heavier weight thread or matching the thread color with your outer layer because it's going to really help hide any imperfections. But anyways, moving on, next we're going to make the webbing strap. Cut one two yard strip. You can cut this longer or shorter, but I recommend starting at two yards and trimming it down. Start by grabbing your strap slider and placing it on your webbing. Feed the webbing through both openings of the slider and move the slider about one foot down the webbing. Grab one of your lobster clasps. Feed the webbing through the opening on the clasp, the same side as the slider. The next step can get kind of confusing, but we're going to take the same end of the webbing and feed it through the slider from the back side. Starting at the furthest opening and then feeding it back through the nearest opening. When the webbing is through the nearest opening, we're going to pull it out about two inches, roll the webbing end over once, and lay it back onto the opposite side it went through the first opening. Move the other webbing out of the way and add a nice tack stitch. With the webbing end tacked down, we're going to move to the opposite side of the webbing, grab our last lobster clasp, Feed the webbing end through the opening on the clasp, roll the end over once, and place it on the opposite side of the webbing. And add our final tack stitch. And you can actually do a box stitch, an X stitch, or just a couple bar tack stitches. All these stitching techniques will hold the strap together and work nicely. As you can see, the strap slider moves up and down the strap nicely, adjusting the strap. And this is why I say start with two yards for this type of strap, because you can really adjust it to be fairly small. If you decided to make this webbing strap, the next thing you want to do is clip it on and see if it's the right size. It's super easy to adjust at this point, trim it down, restitch it, and really customize it to your size. But anyways, moving on to the next strap idea, we're going to use a leather strip, two 8 inch chains, and two chain loops. And this technique can be made in so many different leather to chain ratios. I just generally want to show you the technique and you can make it into your own idea. This strip is about 90 inches and you can't adjust it, so I recommend cutting it to your exact need. And really quick, another option is just using the chain as your entire strap. You get one that's long enough and you clip it to your D-rings and you're good to go. But anyways, back to the other strap idea. I'm gluing two of these strips together. This will help eliminate that raw side and give me a nice clean strap on both sides. 
The glue is pretty much just for the placement so I can get these straps perfectly lined up. You don't have to use glue, you can go straight to the stitching. Once the glue sets, you can start to see the workings of a strap. Typically, I would add two to four stitches through the center of the strap on the sides and in the center, but for this video, I'm just gonna keep it as glued, so I'm gonna trim the outside edges round just to give it a nicer looking shape at the ends. Repeat this process for the opposite end, trying to make it as similar as possible. Find where you wanna place that chain loop, punch out a hole, feed your screw through the hole, and thread on your loop. Keep in mind, this is just a concept. I'm showing you something you can do. It's not totally perfect or perfected. It's just a quick idea. At this point, you clip your chains to the loop and your strap is essentially complete. And it would look a thousand times better by adding stitches in the center of that strap or cleaning up the outside edges. There's so many things you can do to make it unique and overall make it your own. So have fun with it, test different straps out, find something that's gonna work best with your bag. And just real quick, again, this strap is not adjustable, so you're gonna wanna make this one to the size you wear. The final, final step is adding your branding. I like to add mine in areas that I can clip different things to. I just used a strip of leather that I branded and I installed it with double-sided rivets. And there you go, your clutch purse is complete. Hopefully yours turned out good. And it can be pretty tricky sewing on the outer layer to the zipper. It takes a lot of time and patience to really get that right. I do recommend looking into walking foot sewing machines if you're working with leather or any of these vinyl materials. Presser feet can get hung up as you're sewing through and it kind of offsets the entire top panel and it ends up making your zipper longer or shorter than the actual width of the opening. But when you're using a walking foot, both of those materials are walking through at the same time, giving you a perfect alignment. But anyways, I love to see how your bags turned out. So tag me on Instagram at properfitclothing. And like always, I'm gonna keep the videos coming at you. So I'll see you next time.